as a mountaineer and a motivational speaker, I get asked all the time as to what it is that makes me go on. For as long as I remember, people have wanted to know what it is exactly that draws me to these gigantic structures of rock and ice. And I have to confess that it has always been a challenge to explain in words the sort of high and the sort of nirvana that I get from exposure to high altitude. I'm the sort who believes in making their own destiny. This year, I chose a very challenging climb. I and my climbing partner were going to attempt an unclimbed 6,000 meter technical peak in the remote valley of Shimshal, and that too in winters. And for this purpose, I wanted an experienced and technically sound climber on my team, someone I could trust. Yo, Dr. Ra, they're going to Chashkin. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Dr. Naveed Iqbal. I am Pakistani mountaineer. I climbed uh, Spantic Peak in 2012. It, it is a 7,027 meter peak. Uh, we successfully submitted it with a park. It was a Park China joint expedition. And the next year, uh, I climbed Mustagata. It is uh, situated in uh, China. It is a 7,586 meter peak. And we successfully uh, submitted it. And uh, then I also represented uh, Pakistan in China, in Beijing, an in international rock climbing competition. It was bouldering, speed climbing, and lead climbing uh, uh, competition. Uh, my first trek uh, was in 2003. It was a Bruegel uh, Pass. We uh, started from Chetral, and then it was uh, uh, we went to Gilgit. So during the uh, this trek, I saw many peaks. Uh, 7, 000, around 7,000. So from there I got this inspiration that I should climb big peaks. So that's I'm here now. That's <laughs> awesome, thank you. Expedition food shopping is a very critical task because once you are beyond 3,000 meters, it becomes very important to have some variety in the menu or else the effects of high altitude are enough to make you moody and one may lose appetite altogether. Packing, unpacking and repacking are essential and unavoidable. Once done with the initial packing, I left for Islamabad from Lahore via the motorway. I spent a night in the lovely capital city of Islamabad and arranged some more stuff for the expedition and then headed out for Gilgit via Bisham. Along the way, we picked up Dr. Naveed from Aftapar while passing through places like Taxila, Haripur, Haveliya and Khanpur Lake.
it had been overcast and rainy all along and this was the first time ever that I saw fresh snow as low as on the hills surrounding Mansera. We travelled almost non-stop into the night, arriving in Gilgit just before twilight. Hey, Assalamu alaikum everyone. This is Saad Muhammad, the Desi Mountaineer. 4 March is and we arrived in Gilgit about uh, half an hour ago. And uh, this is the ride we came in. Or uh, now we are shifting our gear and we are going to be going into that second land cruiser. Uh, Vazir Beg from Chimshal has arrived and we are shifting our um, stuff from one car to the other. So, we are going to the My favorite part of the drive up north begins almost right after Gilgit when en route to Hunza. I can clearly imagine myself riding a Harley Davidson on this stretch of the road, right up to Khunjurab. The Karakurum Highway, or the KKH, has evolved from a single track pothole road to an engineering marvel over the years. And the tunnels that the Chinese have built let you evade all the potential landslides along this section of the road. We arrived in Hunza early morning, had a quick breakfast and refueled in Ali Abad. I have simply fallen in love with the narrow curving streets and alleys of Karimabad. If I had had the luxury, I would have dedicated a whole episode to this scenic little mountain town. Almost 30 minutes into the drive after departing from Hunza, we entered the Atabad tunnels. These five tunnels are seven kilometers long, and I know firsthand how hard it was to go across the Atabad lake while the tunnels were still being constructed. From 2010 to 2014, I must have crossed the lake maybe four times by boat, lugging along duffel bags full of food and climbing gear for my expeditions. The tunnels were long and dark, and I have seldom seen the ventilation system working or the lights functioning. lake, however, was semi-frozen when we drove by. Now that I think of it, since I grew up visiting the Himalayas, the Hindu Kush and the Karakuru, I've maybe started taking their stark and rugged majesticness as a given. But for a foreign eye, these landscapes are a sight to behold, a sight to cherish. After the Atabad tunnels, we crossed the bridge at Husseini and went past Kulmit and Gulkin before arriving at Pasu.
Shortly after Pasu, we took an exit from the KKH and headed east on a jeep road. which pretty soon entered a narrow gorge, which has literally been cut into the mountainside. This road runs perilously along the river that flows out of the Shimshal Valley. Hi everyone, this is Saad Mohammed, the Desi Mountaineer, and this is 4th March, and this is about uh, quarter past noon, and we are on the Shimshal Road, uh, as you can see. So we've stopped because there's a landslide on the road, and we'll have to cross this section on foot because uh, there is some concern about um, some more rockfall. So let's see um, how this goes. So we'll just uh, cross this section and uh, the driver will bring the the 4x4 over on the other side. So yeah, um, that is how it is. So. Because earlier this morning, uh, there was a rock fall and one of the jeeps got pretty damaged. Fortunately, there wasn't any loss of life and limb but the vehicle was pretty damaged. So yeah, we'll have to be very careful in this section. Landslide and rock fall was fresh on the jeep road to Shimsha, but thankfully the holdup was short and we were off on our way soon. takes a dramatic turn after the second rickety old suspension bridge and the gorge narrows up even further as we gradually gain altitude. If any of you have ever been to Ferry Meadows, which is the viewpoint of Nanga Parbat, and taken the jeep ride from Raikot to Tato village, I can personally guarantee that this journey is thrice as more thrilling. In fact, it is one of the most thrilling 4x4 experiences to have in Pakistan. The road to Shimshal became operational in 2002. Before that, the locals and visitors used to trek into the valley in two to three days. Before the road, life in Shimshal was very hard.
Since this was my seventh expedition to the valley, therefore, Wazir let me take the wheel of his beloved land cruiser for a bit. खबतीन हजरात हम इस वक्त 2400 मीटर की बुलंदी पर प्रवास करते हुए शिमशार एयरवेज की प्रवास पी के एस एच मामू सिंह पे जा रहे हैं और उम्मीद है कि कैबिन प्रेशर पीछे ठीक होगा और अगर एयर होस्टेस ने आपको ड्रिंक्स ट्रॉली ऑफर नहीं की तो आपको मतलब किया जाता है कि इस फ्लाइट में एयर होस्टेस है ही नहीं Driving over a wooden suspension bridge is probably the most exciting thing that I've done recently, other than climbing mountains of course. Fifty-five kilometers and three hours after exiting the Karakoram Highway, the valley opens up and you start seeing signs of life again. Stone walls flanking the alleys and single-story houses are a hallmark of Shimshar. And when you cross the frozen stream that divides Aminabad from central Shimshar, you can be sure that you're about to reach your destination. Khatak, the sunrise peak welcomes you in the east and serves as a constant reminder that you are now on a much higher altitude than what you are normally used to. It was well past midday when we finally arrived at our guest house in Shimshar. <laughs> <laughs> 